Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Haya. I'm a nutrition scientist with a PhD from King's College London. And on this channel, we talk about vegan nutrition, lifestyle, and materials. Today, I wanted to tell you about what it's actually like to do a PhD. I wanna talk you through what to expect if you're curious about it and you're considering maybe pursuing one, or if you know someone who's doing it and you want some insight into what their journey is like. From my experience, I wanna talk you through what a PhD entails in terms of its structure and also what to expect in terms of its day-to-day. First, what is a PhD? A PhD stands for a Doctor of Philosophy. And philosophy, according to its Greek origins, philosophia, means love of wisdom. In a PhD, you produce original research that expands the boundaries of knowledge. You essentially try to close knowledge gaps and discover something new to help further the field. It typically takes around three or four years in the UK, and at the end of it, you produce a thesis. It looks something like this, which you might have seen. At the end of it, you have a viva, also called a defense, where a group of experts, maybe two or three, would have read your work and they come and examine you and ask you about your research. When you pass this defense or viva, that's when you're rewarded a PhD. Your PhD will have an overarching topic or a research question. This question identifies a gap in our knowledge. For example, in my case, it was about determining how important sleep was in modulating dietary health and also metabolic health and weight. You then start doing a set of studies or experiments in order to fill these gaps and make discoveries. There are a lot of different types of studies depending on the questions that you're trying to answer. And the amazing part is that you get to, together with your supervisor, design these experiments and go after answering these questions. So you grow a different variety of research skills. This will depend on, again, your research question and your types of studies that you're doing. But this could be, for example, analyzing large data sets and epidemiological studies. It could be lab-based studies and cell culture work. It could be human clinical trials and clinical trial management. So it could be very varied and it will depend on your own program. To give you a concrete example of what a program might look like, in my case I did four studies. One was called a systematic review and meta-analysis. It combines all previous evidence that was done according to a criteria that you've defined, and then you combine them all in a statistical analysis. The second study was a population study. It was a statistical analysis of a UK dietary data set. The third was an observational study also called a cross-sectional study where I actually had to collect data from people and analyze it. So this was looking at a single snapshot in time of their sleep, their diet, their health, etc. And the fourth was a randomized controlled human clinical trial. And this is where you take a group of people and you give one half an intervention and the other half you don't, and you measure the impacts of that intervention on markers that you're interested in. In my case, it was looking at how an intervention that teaches people how to sleep better can affect their diet, their energy expenditure, their health markers like their metabolic health, and also some appetite hormones. You then read a lot, and I mean a lot, because you have to be on top of all of the literature that's coming out in your field. The reason is that you are becoming the go-to person in that research area and you use all of that literature and all of that science to inform your studies throughout the program because you are designing these studies with your supervisor and it's up to you to understand all of the literature that's coming out and use that as justification for your methods and your design and to inform your research. And of course, as you're getting a handle on all of that literature throughout your whole program, it makes your thesis writing process a lot simpler. But you don't only get to read all of this scientific literature, you get to also publish your own. And that's really encouraged while you're in your PhD. So you get to actually write papers and manuscripts and submit them to these journals and get them published. This is so encouraged in the scientific field because if you're not publishing it, then other scientists won't know about it and they can't identify knowledge gaps or they might repeat what you've done, but the purpose is that together, you're advancing the scientific field and the research. So it's the way to make your work contribute to the field. So what does it actually mean to publish in a scientific field? Will you write a paper in a pretty standard way? So there's an abstract, there's an introduction, a methods, a results section, and a discussion. 
and this gets reviewed by other experts. So they peer review your work and then that gets published into the journal. Of course, also these reviewers come back to you with suggestions and feedback and you have to either adjust your work based on their feedback or respond with justifications for why you made the decisions that you did. And then eventually your paper gets published. And with that, with all of these different projects that are going on, you are the one who manages your own time. It's basically up to you to make it all happen. Essentially, you don't really have a deadline in your PhD. You set your own deadlines throughout these four years and ensure that by the end, you have a body of work to show. You also get to communicate your findings in conferences. At a conference, you present your research, and this is so great for a few reasons. Of course, first you get feedback on your research and you may get new ideas. It also might mean you meet people where you facilitate collaborations. It might improve job opportunities. And of course, you get to also practice public speaking in auditoriums. You also kind of become like part of the academic team. You're sort of halfway between a student and a staff member. So you get to contribute to the department teaching. And this might be running lab classes or lectures for undergrads and also master's students. You might attend your department meetings, you might have journal clubs or seminars in the department, and it's all an opportunity to learn from all your colleagues. In terms of day-to-day -day life, it really depends on your program and on your research. Also, you'll go through phases where in some parts maybe you have to sit at your computer quite a lot and then maybe other parts you're spending it in the metabolic research unit or clinic a lot. It just depends where you are in your data collection process or your writing process. Because as I'd mentioned, all of these different projects could be overlapping or going on at the same time. You also manage your own time. A lot of supervisors just leave you to it, so you set your own schedule. Sometimes you may have to be working really early, so coming in at 7 to be able to come in before your participants arrive and you might have really, really early starts. You might leave a little bit earlier as well. For some students I know who had cell cultures, so they actually had to come in on the weekend and feed their cells to make sure that they're still alive and they can do experiments on them. Some people were night owls, they tended to do their best work later in the night, so they came in at 2 p.m. and they left at maybe 11 p.m. It really depends. But in general, treating it like a job is a really good idea. For me personally, it was coming into work every day from about 9 till 6 and trying to make it as routine and scheduled as much as possible. It's kind of like having a job, but you set your own schedule and you manage yourself while you're doing your program. You're writing, you're writing your methods, you're writing papers, you're writing literature reviews. And towards the end is where you tie it in all together and create one story, one thesis. The length of the thesis depends again on your research, but bigger isn't necessarily better. The limit, I believe, is about 100,000 words, but you'll have an introduction, a methods, one chapter per research paper, so for me it was four, and then you have a discussion that ties it all together and makes suggestions for future research. So putting it back into the context of, in my case, public health. This thesis is then sent to your examiners and they have time to read it and come up with all of their suggestions and questions they want to discuss with you. Your VIVA is basically your discussion or examination. The format of the VIVA depends on your university. Maybe there might be a presentation where the public is allowed to join, you can invite your friends and family, or it's a discussion just with you and the examiners, which was my experience. So I had two examiners and they came in and we had basically this book, all three of us, and we went through page by page and they had pre-marked all of their questions and we went through them one by one. The duration will vary. Some vivas I've heard were maybe about 90 minutes, two hours, some can go up to three or four hours. Mine was three and a half hours. Going through a PhD, of course, there are challenges and mainly they're mental challenges. It is absolutely a marathon, it's not a sprint. It takes endurance and working at a pace and in a way that you feel like you can really continue. And you get to figure that out for yourself, the best way that you work and what keeps you motivated. But it's not really about just motivation. It can take discipline, making sure that you're showing up on the days when things maybe aren't going right. Sometimes it could be quite lonely. Some parts of it, you work very independently, for the majority of it really. You're alone in your thoughts, you're alone in your ideas. Of course, you have your supervisor to talk with, but it's
it's a very independent journey. That's why it's so important to have great relationships with your colleagues around you. So the people around you in your office, in your lab, in your clinic, they become your support network. And even though they are not experts in your area, because you are the only one who's read so much about your field, it could sometimes be very refreshing to get their thoughts and their ideas based on their experience. I did this a lot with my friend Anna. Anna had a different project to myself, but I remember so much in the writing process and also in the papers and presentations, we would run through things together to give each other our own perspective, even though we didn't know as much about each other's specific projects. But a fresh set of ideas and eyes can be very, very helpful. Of course, you're setting the pace, you're setting the program, you're setting when all of the studies are happening, but not everything goes to plan and maintaining flexibility is so important. So building in that contingency in the plan is gonna be key to help keep it all on track and running on time. You won't know how to do everything. That's the point really. You're going in and having a mindset that everything is figure outable, you can find the answer to anything is so, so helpful. It's gonna be up to you to find all the information that you need. Your supervisor is there of course to guide you but at the end of the day, you are running this project. It's a body of work that's your own that you're producing. With that, coming out of a program, you have so many transferable skills, not just to academia, but also to a commercial setting or whatever it is that you wanna do. You also then get exposure to new cultures. You may be moving to a new country where your university is located, and you might meet a lot of international students and learn from their experience and their backgrounds, and it's one of the best parts, I think. You come out with very close relationships with your supervisor, with your friends who went through it with you, and importantly, you learn how to learn. You learn how to ask questions and how to find information and following your curiosity. I hope this video answered any questions you might have had about what it's like to do a PhD and what to expect of that sort of program. If you have any questions, definitely pop them down below. I'm more than happy to help. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one.